The power of flight has placed birds among the most successful animals to ever exist, but nothing holds a candle to the abilities of the most advanced flyers in the bird world, hummingbirds. These guys can do things that no other bird is capable of. They're able to fly in any direction with mesmerizing speed and control, and they power their unparalleled flight with a metabolism that is straight up insane. Their stunning array of colors is beaten only by their staggering diversity, as over 100 species of these dazzling gems can live in the same place at the same time. But how are they able to fly like this? What is the purpose of those brilliant colors? And how can so many of them all coexist without competition wiping them out? The answer is that it all comes down to one very special food. Hummingbirds are probably the most instantly recognizable birds on the planet, and when you see them up close, they're so crazily evolved that I almost give some credit to the birds or government drones nutjobs. They do kinda look like drones when they fly, but at a seriously tiny scale. Hummingbirds average 7 to 13 centimeters in length. That's 3 to 5 inches, so about the size of your phone, but they're only the weight of a couple pennies. They are, in fact, the world's smallest birds, but judge them by their size, you should not, because they make up for their diminutive stature with absolutely insane biology. Their physical abilities are mind-blowing. Trying to keep up with even one hummingbird buzzing around you is equal parts fascinating and impossible, but here in Ecuador, there are a whopping 133 different species of them. Each one is more beautiful than the last, but because they're active all day and rarely sit still for long, hummingbirds are exceptionally difficult to film in the wild. That is why we have come to a remote lodge tucked deep into the cloud forests of the Andes Mountains. Because many of the ecotourism lodges in Ecuador offer the unique chance to see hummingbirds up close by leaving out specialized feeders full of a sugar water formula very similar to their natural diet which all the hummingbirds in the area learn that they can visit for an easy meal. Because they encounter lots of humans around these feeders, the birds have mostly lost their fear of us and let people get very close. But it's important to note that they're completely wild and can leave at any time. This setup allows us to get much better shots of far more species than we could in the field, which will let us show you parts of their amazing lives that you've never seen before. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to help you become an insider in the unbelievable stories of the weirdest and wildest animals on the planet. And when it comes to hummingbirds, their story has to start with their unmatched flying abilities. Perhaps the thing hummingbirds are most famous for is their insane flying ability, which is pretty much unmatched in the bird world. They can fly in literally any direction, both up and down and straight backwards, and they can even hover completely in place, which is totally unique among birds. These flight abilities are made possible by the specialized structure of the hummingbird's wings. They have incredibly strong shoulder and chest muscles, and also a unique shoulder joint that allows them to flap their wings in a figure eight motion, which very importantly generates lift on both the upstroke and the downstroke of their wing beats. This is the key to how they hover and fly in all directions, and these abilities are a crucial part of how they feed. Now, food is particularly important for this technique because it is extremely energetically expensive and taxing to fly this way. Just to keep themselves in the air, some hummingbirds will flap their wings up to 80 times per second. Their bodies are literally going into overdrive to make this work. You're not kidding. At the peak of their activity, their hearts will beat over a thousand times per minute. And when they're flying this way, their bodies will consume 10 times more oxygen than even the most elite human athletes. Now, that's a lot of effort just for a meal, but it's actually what they're eating that makes this all worth it. The advanced flight of hummingbirds makes it possible for them to feed while flying, which is actually how they eat most of the time. Ironically, it takes a lot of energy to eat this way. Many hummingbirds will burn the human equivalent of over 150,000 calories per day from foraging, 10 times more than a marathon runner in competition. They have to feed almost constantly during the day to sustain this absolutely mind-blowing energy requirement. 
And while they will take insects for protein and vitamins, almost all of their energy comes from a single food source. The long, tube-like beaks of hummingbirds are perfectly suited for reaching deep into flowers to lap up the literal secret sauce behind their success, nectar. Nectar is a hummingbird superfood because it's readily available anywhere with flowering plants, which is everywhere in a rainforest, and because it's incredibly energy-rich. Nectar is basically just sugar with other nutrients and compounds, so it's packing some serious calories, which the hummingbirds absolutely need. The only drawback to nectar being your main food source is that flowers only produce a very limited quantity of it at a time. And there are a lot of other animals that are competing for this essential resource. But the reason hummingbirds go to such great lengths to harvest nectar is because they have evolved to use it about as efficiently as is physically possible. What really makes nectar the perfect food source for hummingbirds is how quickly they can use the energy it provides after they eat it. Now, when we eat a meal, it can take up to a full day or even longer for us to convert those calories into usable energy, but the hummingbirds are different. They can process the energy from nectar in as little as 30 minutes, which means that they can actually power their foraging flights with the energy they're getting from the nectar. And in fact, they can power up to 100% of all of their metabolic activity just from their food. And that's really the only reason why their foraging style is possible in the first place. Now here's what's interesting. Because they process their food so quickly, they need to eat between one and a half and three times their body weight every single day just to function normally. To accomplish this, they have to visit between 1,000 and 2,000 flowers every day. And that's a lot of foraging for such a small bird. So you may wonder how it is that hundreds of hummingbird species that all need to feed on thousands of flowers are able to coexist in the same place. When we watched these birds interact and kind of fight around the feeders, it was almost like they were never going to see food again with how adamantly they were defending it. But that's because competition is fierce in the cloud forest. We've been watching the hummingbirds fight over these feeders all morning, and it's really fascinating to watch. It's a great opportunity to see how these birds have to compete for resources here. There's probably no better example of that than the buff-tailed coronets. They're the larger hummingbirds that we see hopping down to the feeders, and they'll actually bully the other species and push them out of the way so that they can get more of the sugar water. And that's just a perfect example of how these animals have adapted their behavior to target the resources they need and force their way in when necessary. And the thing about that is that when you have all of this competition, that drives species to eliminate it as effectively as they can through their evolutionary pathways. So that is one of the major reasons why we see the hummingbird diversity that we do here in Ecuador. The birds need to specialize so that they don't have to constantly compete when the resources aren't as abundant as they are here at the feeders. When you're out in the rainforest and the flowers are diverse, but the resources are quite limited, the birds that specialize are the birds that survive. And it hasn't been just the birds. Just as hundreds of species of hummingbirds rely on flowers for their food, over 7,000 species of flowering plants rely on hummingbirds for pollination, which, reminder, is a key step in plant reproduction. Flowering plants and the hummingbirds that feed on them have undergone a process called coevolution, in which species that interact frequently influence each other's evolution in a way that benefits their relationship. Take a species like the sword-billed hummingbird as a perfect example. They have comically oversized bills that are actually longer than the length of their body, but this is perfect for feeding on flowers like this Passiflora species, which has evolved its own incredible length to prevent any other pollinators from accessing its nectar. Now, it was once believed that all coevolutionary patterns were this one-to-one -one relationship with one pollinator and one flowering plant, but it's now understood that they're not quite this closely associated. But what you will see is hummingbirds with long beaks being better able to pollinate certain kinds of flowers, while hummingbirds with shorter beaks are better able to pollinate different kinds of flowers. So that's how they're actually preventing the competition. They're splitting up the resources in a way that they're not all competing for the exact same things. And they both get something important out of this relationship. The hummingbirds benefit because they have far less competition for their very important food source, and the flowers benefit because it makes their reproduction much more efficient when the animal that pollinates them is extremely likely to go pollinate another member of their species. 
Earth. This diversification has been ongoing for tens of millions of years, and hummingbirds have now specialized to the point that competition doesn't even hinder their chance at survival. But this is only half the puzzle when it comes to hummingbirds. Coevolution explains how they can all live in the same place and why we see so much variation in their beak shape, but that doesn't explain their stunning coloration and also crazy features like this super long tail. You'd think that having such a long tail would make it way harder for them to fly, and you'd be right. <laughs> that being said, as usual with lots of pretty things in nature, it all comes down to reproduction, because the females are very choosy about what features they want their partners to have. Hanging out at these feeders, we've seen a ton of really cool new species, and there are two that have really captured our attention, the violet-tailed sylph and the booted racket tail. And both of those birds get their names for a reason. Their tails are absolutely amazing. For such a small bird, and especially with hummingbirds that fly so quickly, you may wonder how it is that they've evolved these super long tails that would give extra targets for a predator to grab onto and they weigh the birds down pretty heavily. But the reason these traits have evolved is because the females love the males with longer tails and prettier colors because it indicates their fitness, their health. If a male is able to survive with a long ornamented tail, it's a sign that they're strong and able to fend for themselves even with this additional weight. That shows that they will probably have good genes that make them a good partner to mate with. Female hummingbirds really call the shots when it comes to mating, and over millions of years and hundreds of thousands of generations, they've selected for males with the brightest colors and the biggest ornamentations. So that's basically created a survival advantage for birds that have these traits, and those are the traits that end up being passed on to future generations. This evolutionary process is called sexual selection, and it's actually where a lot of the gorgeous colors we see in nature, especially in the bird world, come from. Color is much more than just decoration to hummingbirds, though, because believe it or not, their bright coloration is one of their most important communication tools. But to understand how that works, you need to understand where hummingbird colors come from. Hummingbirds have the widest variety of feather colors of any bird family, but rather than coming from actual pigments, their color is created by the way the unique structure of their feathers reacts with light. A bit of basic physics for context. We see color when an object reflects a certain wavelength of light into our eyes, and the color of light that's reflected is determined by the physical structure of the object. In the hummingbird's case, their feathers contain several layers of specialized structures that scatter light in different ways when it passes through them. The varying arrangement and layering of these structures causes the color of light that gets reflected to change depending on the angle you view it from a phenomenon called iridescence. The angle only has to change a tiny bit to instantly display a bright new color. And it's this rapid color changing ability that makes structural coloration such a useful communication tool for these birds. Hummingbirds are so small that you'd think that they would be kind of delicate and a bit shy, but in reality, they are anything but. These birds are socially complex and highly territorial, and they will aggressively defend their favorite feeding patches or resting spots from any other bird. And a huge part of how they express themselves is through the manipulation of their color. Hummingbirds use patches of color on certain parts of their body, particularly their throat, chest, and wings, to express how they're feeling. For example, if a hummingbird flashes the bright coloration of its throat and tries to puff itself up to make it look as big as possible, that's an intimidation display to try and ward off potential predators. Right, and it's also very apparent in their courtship. When a male hummingbird wants to impress a potential partner, he'll use a very complex flight pattern that positions him in the perfect place for his colors to be reflected right back at the female at different points. So he'll show off his throat, the coloration on his back, on his wings, all to make him look as pretty as possible, using his structural coloration to make the female see exactly what he wants her to. And those are just a few of the uses of their structural coloration, but it comes into play during feeding bouts, during territorial disputes, in courtship, like Harrison mentioned, it really adds a whole other dimension to the way that these birds can communicate, when otherwise they'd pretty much just be limited to their songs and general behavior. And what I find really interesting about this structural coloration is that the changes happen instantly. So as we were watching the hummingbirds at the feeders, one would turn its head ever so slightly and then erupt into bright green or bright pink. And when you see how fast their colors can change, it makes sense that this is actually a viable form of communication. It's not just a visual thing for them. 
Just like their insane metabolism and their unmatched flight skills, the hummingbird's coloration is a critical part of their story of survival. And these adaptations have made them one of the most successful families of birds on the planet. But despite all the mind-blowing abilities that hummingbirds possess, there are some problems that even their real-life superpowers can't solve. Hummingbirds are facing major threats from human activities throughout their range, especially in the tropics, and the biggest issue of all is habitat destruction. Like many specialist species, hummingbirds are extremely sensitive to environmental changes because they rely on such specific resources to survive. And when the native habitat gets destroyed for agriculture or development, they often lose access to those resources. Add on the intense environmental pressure from global climate change and competition from invasive plant species pushing out their food sources, and you have a recipe for disaster facing these incredible birds. Luckily, all hope is not lost for hummingbirds. Their beauty and charismatic behavior have attracted a lot of conservation attention from researchers and citizen scientists alike. And there is a lot of ongoing work focused on understanding the secrets of their survival. The more we learn about hummingbirds, the better equipped we'll be to protect them into the future. So just by watching and sharing videos like this, you're helping to secure a brighter future for these irreplaceable birds. If you want to meet some of the other amazing avian life that calls the Cloud Forest home, check out this video, where we highlight six of this ecosystem's most mind-blowing bird species. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.